Hi, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. We're going to continue our Belfort playthrough in a moment, but there's just something I want to clarify that I noticed come up in a couple of the players' suggestions. If, as an action, you want to purchase for one coin one of the face-up property cards or draw one card from the face-down property deck, you can do that during the action phase, but it has to be the very last action that you take. So in other words, you couldn't purchase one of these properties during your action phase and then build it during that same action phase. There are certain other locations, like the Librarian's Guild, or if you've built a library property, where you can pick up some property cards during the round and then potentially build it during the same round. But that specific action of paying a coin to buy a property card has to be your last action. Okay, we're going to get Luke down here, and when we come back, we're going to continue our Belfort playthrough. Okay, we're back, and so is... Luke Smith. That's right. Now, this round is going to be interesting yep. because we're going to be including... Scoring phase. That's right. There's going to be a scoring phase, but first we have to do the action yep. phase. And the suggestion that got the most votes came from Pillinger, who starts by crediting Xavier, and basically he took some of Xavier's ideas and sort of created his own customized action. So, good team up, gentlemen. Let's get everyone to the table, and we'll yep. see what they want me to do. So to start, our dwarf is going to return from the Mason's Guild, and he's going to bring with him four stone, which yep. we'll add to our camp here. And next, we're going to build a gatehouse in our district. This is one of the cards that I have in my hand. Ooh. So I'm going to play this out. It costs two wood. Two wood. Two stone. Two stone. And... Two metal. That's right. So those are gone. But now I get to place a property marker. And he wants me to place it here in this district that I'm trying to get control of, but Luke's been throwing lots of other competing <laughs> contractors in here to deal with. Now he wants me to visit Crazy Ord's Trading Post, where I'm going to spend one coin so that I can collect a single stone. Yep. And the reason that I'm doing that is so that I can build the Blacksmith, my other property card. Ooh. We're on a building frenzy here, Luke. <laughs> this is going to cost one wood, four stone, and one metal. And this property marker he wants me to place in this district down here. So now when it comes to the scoring phase, I have the most property markers in this area right now. But we're not finished yet. He wants me to spend some of my coin, three of them to be exact, and then purchase a gnome and place that gnome into the gatehouse. This is going to let me take another property marker and place it on the other portion of one of my gatehouses. I only have one right now, so it's going here, which is going to put another property in another district. So again, I have another majority in this district here. Yeah. What do you think of that, Luke? This is trouble. <laughs> You're right. And I'm not even finished yet, Luke. Oh, man. I'm going to spend this last <laughs> coin to purchase the keep property card. We're going to no. add that to my hand. Why, did you want that one? Yep. I don't blame you. So I have to flip this one over, and an in is going in its place. I don't mind saying, Luke, I was getting worried about how things yeah. were going for me. I'm not feeling quite as worried now. Excellent, excellent suggestions, players. But listen, it's not over yet. You get your action phase now. Let's get you guys back to the table and see what Luke's going to do. So for my first action, I'm going to build the bank. The bank. That's a nice one. This yep. is, When you have a gnome on it, it allows you to collect a free coin per turn. Yeah. All right. You're spending your resources. Very good. Now, where are you going to put the property marker? I'm going to put it right here. Now, that's good thinking because right now, up to this point, I was yeah. uncontested in this area. That was going to be five points I was getting. Oh, yeah. Now we're tied for majority in that district. What would you like to do next? Next, my dwarf is going to come back with a dwarf buddy. <laughs> okay. He's bringing a dwarf friend with him. Now, why did you choose a dwarf? Because... You had four dwarfs. Yes. And the other opponents had four dwarfs, so I would come in last and I wouldn't get any points at all. Okay, so you're trying to, you're yeah. planning ahead for worker majority. That's also very smart. Okay, so what is it that you want to do next? I'm going to the trading post and I'm going to put in this metal for one coin. You're selling the metal for yeah. one coin. Okay, now you have three coins. I have a feeling I know what you're going to do. Gnome. <laughs> You're going to buy a gnome. Okay. Yep. Well, spend your three coin. You need to place this on a, a gnome lock. Yeah. Do you have a gnome lock? The bank You one. certainly do. The bank. What would you like to do next? 
And Luke's flipping the gnome over just so we can see that that ability has already been used this phase. We'll flip the gnome back over again at the end of the action phase. Well, Luke, you have a coin left over. Do you want to purchase one of the property? Nope. Okay. Well, I've got to say, Luke, it looks like you made up some ground there. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to move on to the non-player's action phase. We're going to start with me, who has to take the actions for Harvey, non-player three. Well, Harvey is going to build the inn, and he's going to place the property marker here. So it's out of my way. I'd love to be able to stick it in here, but Luke has already got a property yes. marker there. What's great about having the blacksmiths left over is I know Luke can't build them here. I've already got a property marker. But it depends. But yes. What's going to be flipped? the blacksmith, you're okay. Yes. Let's hope so. Oh, yeah. the library. Yes. Let me guess. What are you going to want to build, Luke? Library. Okay. Where do you want to put that property marker? In yours. <laughs> I'm taking away my majority in that district. Now, before we go to the scoring phase, which is right now, I forgot to flip over a property card, so let's do that. <laughs> oh, Black look Smith. at that! There's the blacksmith I needed! <laughs> oh, okay, back to the scoring phase. All right, I brought up this board here so you guys could be reminded again. The person who has the yeah. first place majority gets five points, second most will get three points, and third most will get one point. Mm. Keep in mind, non players don't get any points, but they can certainly affect the points. Looking at this first district that I've pulled out here, you can see I have a property marker and Walters has a property marker. We're tied for first place. When you're tied, you then each score the next rank down. So instead, I'll score three points instead of the five that I wanted. So I'll move my score marker like so. That's the first district. Now in this next district, both Luke and I have a single property marker. Yeah. We're tied here. That means we're each gonna get Three points. Three points. One, two, three. One, two, three. So in this district, I have three properties. Purple has... Two. And red has... One. Now, if we were playing a game with real players, that would mean I get five points, purple would get three, and red would get one. one. In this case, I'm the only one who collects points, yeah. and I get five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm moving up into a higher tax bracket here. In this district, I have three buildings, and red has one. So I get five points. And in the final district, Harvey has the majority. But he's not a real player, so no. he doesn't get any points. All right, now it's time to score for worker majorities. I've laid out all of my workers, including my gnomes from the gnome locks and all of Luke's workers. And I've even put out the workers for the non-players. In a two-player game, you always have to remember that the non-players each have four dwarves, four elves. And that's just for this part of the scoring, so that when you're trying to see who has the majority, you have to include them in the mix. So as you can see, we're all tied for having the most dwarves, which means instead of getting the full points, we get bumped down and one. we each get one point. That's right. I'll give myself one point, and I suppose I'll give you a point, Luke. Then, looking at the elves, I only have three. But Luke is tied with the non-players and has four. So that means because Luke and the non-players are tied, they get bumped down to the next rank. They're each going to get one point, and I get bumped right off. There's no points for me, so Luke gets one point. Finally, we look at the gnomes. I have three. Luke has two. I have the most, so I'm going to get three points. Luke has the next most. He's going to get one point. One, two, three, and one. And that's the scoring phase. It sure is. I've got 15 points. You've got? 11. Okay, so I've got a bit of a lead. I hope to keep it. But now we're going to move on to the calendar phase. So we move the calendar marker one space forward. We're now into the start of summer. How nice. Let's get you guys to the table. We're going to do our placement phases. Now before we get started, we have to move these non-player dwarfs one space forward. That's supposed to happen during their non-player action phase, and I just didn't do it. Uh, so I can teach you not to forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Okay, placement phase. I'm going to start by taking one of my elves and placing it in the blacksmith shop. That way, during the action phase, I'll be able to take it off and collect a free piece of metal. What are you doing first? I'm going to the king's camp. Ah, somebody wants to be the first player. Yep. Well, this time around, I'm passing first. I'm going to place three dwarfs into the quarry. One dwarf and elf are going to go into the mines. And finally, I'm going to place my master elf into the gold mines. Next, I'm going to put a dwarf in the Librarian's Guild. Okay, going to check out some books. That costs you... One coin. That's right. And just to remind you, that Librarian's Guild is going to let Luke draw three cards from the deck 
and keep two of them and throw out one of them. So this is a good example of what I was talking about at the beginning of the episode about how you can collect property cards during the action phase. Well, Luke, I'm done, so what do you want to do next? I'm going to pass. Okay. Where are you going to place your workers? One elf here, three dwarves here. Yes. And two extra elves right there. Excellent. That ends the placement phase. On to... Collection phase. So first, I'm going to get one wood, but because I have the most, I get another wood. That's right. However, in the quarry, we're both tied. We each get three stone and no bonus to either of us. Nope. That said, over in the mines, I'm the only one with workers there, so I'm going to get to collect... Two. Two metal. And then in the gold mines, well, I thought I was clever putting my master worker in there. I am going to get two gold. Yeah. Luke, you got two regular workers in there. But You're, I have the most. You have the most workers, so you get two gold plus the bonus. Excellent job. We go over to the recruiter's desk. Nobody's there. We move on to the king's camp. And Luke, you're going to be able to take the first turn order crest. And then we collect our income and pay the taxes. I'll tell you one thing I wish I had more of. Money. Mm -hmm. And let's get some money right now. I get two coin. Two. For my properties. Yep. How many do you get? Two. Excellent. So then if we look at the scoreboard, we have to see how much we owe in taxes. Yeah. Now, if you look at the side of the scoring track of the district that we're currently on, you can see that we owe two coins in taxes. So that money we collected, we have to give back. It's actually kind of a good thing I didn't end up around the corner, or I would owe three gold in taxes. So, easy come, easy go. <laughs> Luke, you can put that back in the bank. All right, now we move on to the action phase. Luke, you are now player number one, so you get to go first. Yep. So to start my action phase, my dwarf is going to come back from the library. Right, now I have to give you the top three cards of the property yep. deck. Luke, go ahead, pick the two you want to keep, and then discard one of them. This one. All right, so we're going to put the in into the discard pile. The yep. other two, we don't know what they are, and Luke is hanging on to them. Now I'm going to build one of the cards I just picked up. The, the pub. pub. Okay, that's going to cost two... Please. Now, look at how that worked out. Exactly what you need. Yeah. Two wood, three stone. Three stone. No wonder they call you Lucky Luke. <laughs> okay, so the pub, its abilities, once he puts a gnome onto the gnome lock, this will let him convert one of his dwarfs. Into a master dwarf. Okay. Well, what do you want to do next? I'm going to collect the gold from the bank. Right. Luke flipped his gnome over. He gets to collect an additional gold piece. Now, what would you like to do? I'm going to get a gnome. All right, Luke's spending... These gnomes are dwindling away. We only have three left. And this gnome, Luke, I'm guessing you're going to put on your pub, pub, aren't you? Now, you know something we forgot to do? Let's flip what? over that dwarf into a master dwarf. But we need to place the property marker for that pub. Oh, yeah. Well, I know where I'm going with that right here. <laughs> no hesitation. Battling me in this district, you now have the majority there. Yep. Well, you have one gold coin left. you want to do anything with it? Nope. Okay, well, that's going to end Luke's action phase. Okay, well, only one round for you this time. We're going to wrap it up here, but I need your help. I'm going to show you the board, my cards, everything. Let me know what you think I should do in the YouTube comments below, and then we'll come back and see if I can keep my lead on Luke. Until the next episode, thanks, thanks for watching. watching.